Hello, good afternoon. It's uh, Adil Fazal here, market analyst at CFDs.com, bringing you a review of the U.S. markets for Wednesday's trading session, the 19th of April, 2017. Please be sure to visit Trade Signal Signals market updates from leading providers at www.tradesignal.com. You can certainly download the app at the Google Play and Apple App Store. Okay, so overnight we have China down 1% again, unfortunately, even though we have stronger economic data and we have concerns, uh, although we do have uh, the Nikkei higher. Uh, obviously, geopolitical concern certainly is weighing there to a large extent with regards to the uncertainty going forward, especially given the fact that Japanese and the Americans have sent their submarines and aircraft, aircraft carriers, etc. Okay, uh, now the other situation uh, that we have is uh, the weaker earnings as well. Goldman Sachs certainly on the weaker side, IBM earnings certainly on the weaker side, so therefore uh, certainly hurting. Now, Saudi Arabia as well certainly raised some doubts with regards to any potential output cuts uh, reversing their earlier position. Uh, so again, certainly cause for concern. Although on the positive side, we have had some comments with regards to Mr. Trump and his potential health care bill and uh, his infrastructure bill, obviously being amalgamated with other bills and therefore obviously uh, raising hopes of that uh, reflation trade certainly kicking back in again. And Merkel certainly winning in terms of uh, the polls, in terms of her election. Oh, obviously, we are concerned with regards to the UK election certainly being called and obviously the French election on the weekend. European trade balance certainly came in stronger, inflation data more or less in line, nothing to be really concerned about in terms of turning the ECB hawkish, so, so again, certainly should remain supportive, but like I said, IBM earnings certainly dragging and Goldman Sachs earnings as well, and obviously with China being down 1% certainly doesn't help. Now let's see exactly where the uh, US market uh, stands. Let's start off with the, uh, the actual Dow itself especially given the fact that we have mortgage data, crude data, and fed based data out today. So let's see where the Dow Jones is and let's see exactly where we stand. So let's start off with the Dow. Let's try and decipher as to, uh, I mean, especially given uh, in terms of in, in relation to European markets, the US markets certainly remain strong and stellar. You can see here on the daily chart, the Dow, certainly an inside bar consolidation there. Okay, on the daily chart, we're certainly looking to hold, looking to bounce here as well. 60 minute chart certainly building a base on the Dow itself so certainly looking towards a bullish argument in terms of the US markets now cross referencing that with the, uh, the the Dow transports again double bottom here certainly arguing for a move higher moving on to the S&P 500 inside bar on the daily chart so again consolidation bullish and therefore looking for a potential thrust higher 60 minute chart has an inverted head and shoulders formation looking to potentially break higher too so certainly keep an eye on that okay folks those two potential patterns in terms of cross-referencing that let's just quickly look at the russell 2000 and again russell is certainly building a base and looks and sets is, is set to potentially move higher so u.s market is certainly looking to potentially break higher here in terms of the nasdaq let's just bring the nasdaq nasdaq really is the uh, the weak weak uh, the weakest amongst them all okay so let's just see exactly where we stand you have resistance here at 5405 in terms of the nasdaq you do have a um, gap fill below so you have an unfilled gap uh, is currently at uh, 5350 so watch out for that potential gap being closed below in terms of the nasdaq and that really does remain the weak link now we have the h s formation target at 5320 we have hit 5350 so far so 5350 really is uh, is gap fill and then you are looking at a potential pop resistance is seen here at 5404 so certainly looking to cap that resistance now if you do break above then the next level is 5442 we'll see exactly how the market responds but the unfilled gap below certainly really is screaming to be closed okay so watch out for the gap below we can cross reference that with the biotech certainly holding horizontal support on the biotechs let's look at the um semicons as well let's bring up the semiconductors okay semiconductors as well certainly pushing higher into resistance now okay so semiconductors have already started to break higher and we'll see exactly how this market responds now you do have gap fill here previous support equals resistance here semiconductors certainly looking bullish after the uh, potential double bottom scenario so nasdaq certainly remains well bid you are looking for a potential pullback initially on the nasdaq down to let's just confirm this in terms of the nasdaq you're looking at a pullback down to 53.50 potentially gap fill if you don't get gap fill then you are looking at least 52 53.80 at least uh given the fact that you have resistance of 54.05 you have gap fill uh currently seen at 53.90 then you have support at 53.85 and then eventually looking at 53.76 78 
Okay, so they are the levels to watch out for in terms of US markets. Now let's bring up the S&P 500, given the fact that we've concluded that you are looking for a potential pop. Uh, the downside risk really is uh, unfilled gap below. You have an unfilled gap on uh, S&P at 2330. So really, from my perspective, 2330 really is the pivot low, okay, on the S&P 500. Okay, so I think that's a good summation of uh, US equities. From my perspective, your any downside is limited. Upside really is unlimited at this moment. Okay, ultimate upside target will be gap fill at 23.57. Okay, on that note, please be sure to visit cfds.com for your trading needs and certainly take advantage of the bonus. Goodbye.